people, what do you think? What is the optimal solution to use the Behringer Wing as it stands here with Waves Live plugins? Right, a WSG module. I have one here, an audio over IP WSG module, and today we will install it into the Wing and configure it together. Enjoy! Yes, folks, you know there are different options. For example, there's the Lynx card, which I've been using for years. I'll link a video up here where I show you how to configure it. It can transmit 32 channels bi-directionally, so from the wing towards, for example, Super Rack Performer, and then back again. Of course, there is also the USB solution, but probably the best solution available is the audio over IP WSG module from the company Behringer. This little module, can be inserted into the internal slot of the Behringer wing. With it, you don't even need an additional card, so you can continue operating the built-in wing live card. That means we now install the gem into the console, then configure Super Rec Performer together so that it runs with the wing, and in the end, we will measure the latency this module provides. I think this is interesting for many. What round trip latency do we have with this audio over IP WSG module? Before we start, I would like to ask you, as always, to click on the little icon below, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell, so you won't miss any further episodes of Besties Base Hour. There's one more thing now. We are not installing this WSG module into this Behringer wing in my studio today, but into this one. My grey wing full size, which I use for all live jobs, it makes sense because I also use a lot of Super Rack or Waves plugins, so I'm installing it into this console right now. At this point, I have a warning for you. Please do not do it like I do, but absolutely have it done by a professional service. If you do it yourself, you will lose the warranty on the console. I am doing this for one reason only. My console's warranty expired three years ago. I've had the console for five years. That means I am doing this at my own risk, unscrewing the console, inserting the module, screwing the console back together, and then we will configure everything together. Alright folks, the DBSG module is now inserted into the wing. You saw the internal slot is at the bottom right of the console. And now we want to start it up. First, we have to power on the console while holding the utility button and entering a string so that the console knows which module is installed here. So I power on the console and hold the left, hold down the utility button. You see that the console options image appears. And here I now have to enter module minus VSG, apply, and if you did everything correctly, you should now see the WSG logo at the bottom left in the menu, the Wave Sound Grid logo. Do you see it here? That means it worked, and the console now recognizes the module. Thus, the hardware is now ready. Next. I have to connect my laptop to the console and configure the laptop accordingly. I have a regular uh, small Samsung laptop here with which I am now testing everything. Mm -hmm. Super Rack Performer is already installed and I'm setting it up now. First, I connect one of the two Ethernet ports from the wing with the Ethernet port of the laptop. As I already explained to you earlier, today I don't want to run it on a Waves server anymore but I want to run Super Rack Performer native on the laptop. You can see it back there. And that's why I need a small additional software. It's called Crack and you can get it at Waves Central. So we simply start Waves Central on the laptop as the central download platform uh, for all Waves plugins and Waves applications. Then we search here under Installed Products for QAC. And it's under all products. Here it is. And we install this software. This QRAC now does the following. It essentially translates the wave sound grid signals 
that come from the console or the waves card, translates them into an ASIO signal, which later functions as a virtual sound card, and is then used again by the wave super rack performer, can be interpreted. The program is free. It is actually intended to record or playback signals and feed them into the sound grid network or retrieve them from there. Next, I start QRack. It initializes this here. I then have to select the Ethernet port up here on which the wing is now connected. In my case, it is the Realtek USB. This takes a little while, then this will also turn green. And if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to find my Behringer wing here among the devices. Here it is. I wait briefly and I see now it has connected to the WSD module. That means we have the wing here. We have here 44.1 kilohertz. That's what I set on the wing as well. And I have 64 input channels and 64 output channels. Here on the little gear icon, I can still make various settings and I have different options, including here, um, system information that I can display. I need to run the sound grid QRC now. That is very important. That means minimizing it here, but keeping it running. And now I can open my Super Rack Performer and in the setup, I should now have the option to select as an audio device to select Waves Sound Grid ASIO. I do that here once. I see that the buffer size is relatively high now. It is set to 256. I go to open control panel and can now turn the buffer size down. And I'll go right to the minimum, which is 32 samples. I've now plugged this microphone into the local input from the console into local input one. And I will now speak into this microphone and route it once directly from the console into the Waves Super Rack Performer and then back to the console. So I go to routing on the console, now selecting as output the cut, in this case, the WSG channel one. Unlock the lock and simply tell it, I want to send the local one over here directly. When I speak into the microphone now, you see that something is coming in on local one. And you also see that it's already being routed over here to the WSG card. In the Wave Super Rack, I want to take exactly this channel one coming from the WSG card through rack one, send through. That means I select the mono input here from the Wave Sound Grid channel one. When I speak into my microphone now, you can see that something is already coming in. And now I also have to route it back to the console on a channel. That means here I am taking the wave sound grid channel one. And now you see that both the input signal is coming up here and the output signal is also coming down here. That means from the console to here, channel one is routed with the microphone and also sent back to the console on channel one. In total, I now have 64 by 64 channels here. That means I can send 64 channels from the wing over to Super Rack. And I can send 64 channels back to the wing from the Super Rack so that I can receive my microphone signal on channel one of the Behringer wing. I still need to do the following. I select channel one and do not set local one as the input for K1 because that would be the direct microphone channel. But I want the one from the WSG card channel one that's this one here and if i now speak into the microphone here you'll see that an input comes back from super rack on channel one of my wsg module and it also goes here as input you can see it into the channel what i now recommend is to set the clock rate to 48 and set the sync source to the wsg module also mm, if it's quite scratchy for you then FN or the network is a bit slow. Then you can adjust the network buffer here, set from 104 to 288 or 512. I found that I need 512 on this laptop. We will soon see what effects this has on latency. We will insert a plugin here again, namely, I'll just take a compressor, a CLA-2A into this channel, and I'm exaggerating a bit. Now I'm adding a ship's omnichannel behind it. So we just have a few plugins running down the line. Altogether, you see that we have zero latency here. 
it says. So both plugins have no latency. That means I would now look for another plugin that has a bit of latency, an Aerox. Yes, now we have 64 samples of latency due to the Aerox. So we have now loaded three plugins into this rec one. That means the path is now the following. We come in through input one over the WSG card into the wave super rich. From there, it goes through three plugins and then back to the console and to channel one. And now, of course, we are very interested in what is the total latency. To measure this, I have come up with the following method. I take my good old Zoom H2 recorder and a tablet. I will later play a short mono sound on the tablet that will be output exactly the same on both channels. I run the left channel, which the tablet outputs through the mixer, through the super rack, back through the console and back to an output. And I record it here on the zoom on the left channel and the right channel. I send directly from the tablet to the zoom. That means the left channel that is output must go through the entire chain. The right channel, on the other hand, is my reference channel. It goes directly to the zoom. When I have recorded that, I go into Cubase and measure the offset between the waves. A very simple method. And that's how I can measure the round trip latency. We start now with a buffer size of 32, but then we also measure 64 for those who like to be on the safe side. So we start the zoom. Recording is running in stereo and we play the ping sound. Let's do it again. So that was 32 samples and we will adjust again now. Here setup, here I see buffer size 32 and now I will try it with 64 samples and we are testing. So and with this recording, we will now go to the Cubase and look at the offset from the direct input to the input that has passed through the mixer and the WSG card. Folks, uh, you see here, I have pulled in my channels now. The directly recorded one is the one below. I'll mark it in red. And the one via the WSG card, I'll mark it in green. So, uh, and if I zoom in close enough here, I see a shift between the two signals. I will turn off the grid and let's try to find the beginning as accurately as possible here. Mm -hmm. So you can see the first larger wave going up here. Let's measure that. We are at five seconds and 951 milliseconds. And now we'll find the same position in the other signal that I sent through the WSG card. This is here and now you see I am here at 966 milliseconds, 5 seconds and 966 milliseconds. This means that we have a round trip latency of around 15 milliseconds here from 951 to when the signal is through the console at 966. Let's check the whole thing again at 64 samples. We are here at 1 minute and 397 milliseconds. And the signal from the mixer at the same point is at 414 milliseconds. That means here we are now at 17 milliseconds round trip latency. You see folks, unfortunately for live operation, it is not suitable. You would really need to go and either buy or build a web server yourself. We will do that another time. I promise you there will be a video where we build ourselves a Wavis live server, but native with Super Rack Performer and the Crack software, it is unfortunately not possible to use it latency wise. Too bad. But uh, as I said, there is the alternative with the Wave server. And that is certainly the better choice for everyone who wants to use a lot of plugins. With that in mind, I wish you lots of fun and a great time with your wings. Write down in the comments what you think about it and how you might use Wave's Super Rack Performer with the wing. And I say, take care, you're busty. Bye.